In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can scrape fbref.com for advanced statistics and advanced data for our football analysis. fbref.com is one of the more popular websites and it is actually the easiest website, in my opinion, to scrape because it's basically just all tables and that makes it very simple to scrape. So to do this, we're gonna be using a combination of CSS selectors and as well as the pandas package in Python. Let's head over to a specific example of a table we are going to scrape. It is the 2022-2023 Champions League stats. I will leave the link in the video description. But essentially what we're going to be doing is we are just going to be scraping the table information. As you can see, a lot of tables on fbref.com. If I go start browsing through all this stuff, I'm gonna get a bunch of tables. We're going to specifically just get this league table right here. So to find out how we can actually extract this information with CSS selectors, what we need to do is we need to open up the Google Developer Tools. So go ahead, right click, and then come down to Inspect right here. And then this is the Google developer tools like we've talked about. And we're going to go down and just come click on the inspect arrow and just highlight this league table right here. You know, you can just click anywhere on it. And then we need to find this specific table tag. So it looks like it's gonna be in here somewhere then just keep drilling down and there we go, we found it. So let's head on over to our Jupyter Notebook. And once we are in our Jupyter Notebook, there really is only a couple lines of code that we need to extract this table information. Let's go ahead and import pandas. So we say import pandas as PD and then run that. And then we're just going to say DF equals PD dot read underscore HTML. So basically this read underscore HTML method is going to allow us to read tables from HTML pages. It's going to do all of the requests. It's going to gather and return that data for us. And we just need to tell it what table we want to extract. So the first argument you need to pass in is just pass in this URL right here. So copy that and paste it in. And so the next thing we need to do is we need to tell it what the attribute of the table we want to scrape. So this is basically just CSS selectors. And so we come up here and go back to this Google developer tool. We see that we have our table tag right here. And then we have this ID right here, which makes it very simple just to extract this data. So copy all of that right there. So you can just triple click into it, then copy it, either right click copy, or just hit command C. And then we're going to come over here. And I'm just going to go to a new line. And I'm going to say ATTRS equals, and then I'll just paste this for now, but I'm going to edit it in a second. And then we'll just close it with a parenthesis. So basically, what we're doing is we're saying the attribute of the table we want to extract one for the ID. So this actually needs to be a dictionary. So let's go ahead and wrap it with our dictionary. And then we're just going to replace the equal sign right here. And then just replace it with a colon and then add and basically just turn this into a dictionary. So we're going to say ID is the key and then the value is the results 2022, 2023, 80 underscore overall. And what this does is this goes and hits the page with a request and it will return the table that has this attribute, has this CSS selector essentially. And then it will return a list. So if we run this, we got it back, it ran successfully. So if we print DF right now, it actually gives us a list of the table. So we wanna add just brackets zero at the end to tell it that we just want the first item in that list. So now let's look at just the top couple of rows. If we say df.head like that, we now have that table. It is in a data frame format. You may also notice that there are all of these NAN rows right here. And if you go back and kind of look at this table, they are basically creating separators 
And so that's what all these NANs are, just these separators that they've created. So to get rid of those, we just have to drop our null values. So if we say df equals df dot drop na like that, and then we'll say subset equals, and then in brackets, just pass in the column. Really doesn't matter. I just like to use the rank column. So we'll say RK and then another bracket with parentheses. And then let's look at it again. So we'll say DF dot head. And there we go. There is our table. We have that entire table and is now in a data frame that we can do analysis on. And so that method really is used for every table on the page and it makes it super easy to get those tables and really efficient if we're just using the pandas package to extract that data. But as you can imagine, not all tables are made equal. So let's go ahead and let's practice with a different table. Hey guys, thanks for watching so far. I just want to say that this is an actual lesson from my new course, the complete football analytics in Python course, which will go over a wide range of different football analytics and Python skills. You'll learn how to install Python, the fundamentals of Python, all the way up until creating a match dashboard and as well learning how to predict football matches with machine learning. And it's really the course I wish I would have had when I had started learning football analytics a while ago. And on top of the course, you get access to a great community as well, which will allow you to learn from others and just really talk about the sport in general, learn about data analysis in Python. So if that interests you, be sure to check out the link in the description and let's get back into the video. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the statistics from Liverpool of 2022 and 2023. So that will just be right here. I'll post that in the description as well. And we are just going to get this whole table right here. So as you can see, this is just all of the advanced statistics. It has expected goals, has progression, has our per 90 has just different basic stats like goals and assists. And what we are going to do is we are going to go and just extract this information. So kind of the same process. Let's open this up, go down to inspect, and then let's use our element finder to find this table. And there it is right there. Just make sure the whole table is highlighted. And then let's just gather this ID information right here. So triple click, copy, and let's come back over here and we can just do the same thing. If we say DF equals PD dot read underscore HTML and then plug in the URL. So make sure you have the URL. Sorry, I messed up my copy order. And then we'll do the same thing with our attributes. So we'll just say ATTRS equals and then curly braces. And we know we're looking for an ID and then colon, and then come back and just get stats standard nine, like this. Make sure it's in a string, then close it with a parenthesis, and, or sorry, with a curly brace, and then a parenthesis. And then do bracket zero at the end, so we get the first item of the list. So go ahead and run that. And then let's just check it out real quick. I'm gonna run a couple of rows just to put this at the top of the page. So we do df.head. We now have our table right here. And as you can see, we actually have multi-indexed or basically two layers of column names. And that is because FBRF for some reason decided that they're going to add a, an initial column header up here so we have playing time performance expected and then the first row technically is player nation all of this information but they're basically creating a double index of a table header okay so we are just going to clean that up a little bit so let's head over to our jupyter notebook so to rename these columns so that they are not multi-indexed we just basically need to join these two values right here. So if we do df.columns.values like this, it's basically every column is two items. It's a tuple of two items, right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to join those two items together. So we'll say df.columns equals, and then we're going to use list comprehension. So just do a list 
and then we'll do underscore dot join call dot strip for call in df dot columns dot values like that. So essentially what this is doing is this is doing a for loop, but it's doing it inside of this list right here. And what we're doing is we're just taking every item in this tuple and then we're joining it together by this underscore and then we're just stripping off the white space. And I missed the two parentheses right there. So if we would have ran that, it would have failed. So go ahead and run this. And now if we look at df.head, we get basically just one level where those have been combined together. So that is how we can start to clean up columns and clean up our column names. But otherwise this table is exactly what we're needing and exactly what we want, right? So that is how we can scrape data from FBREF. It is very simple thanks to the pandas package and it makes our life a lot easier when we're looking for these summary statistics to be able to help us do our analysis. So that's it for this video. Let's go ahead and jump into the next site to scrape.